This meeting is now being recorded. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Lunch and Learn webinar. My name is Donna Karras. I'm your host, and today's webinar is Caregiver Stress, Tips for Taking Care of Yourself with Lisa Scheman. Two things to let you know before we get started. First, I am recording the webinar. If you have to leave early, don't worry. I will send out the recording to everyone later this week. And second, if you have questions, there is a place at the top of the screen that says Q&A. If you click on that, you can enter a question at any time during the webinar. Uh, Lisa will answer your questions uh, towards the end of the webinar. So um, we will be all set, and let me turn this over to Lisa. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this webinar. And I know we had a short YouTube video that we wanted you to see first, and it, um, due to just some malfunction, it wasn't able to upload for today. But I know Donna sent it out, so I'm hoping a lot of you were able to watch it before. Otherwise, you can view it um, after this webinar. Um, just to get started, um, caregivers, there's so many unknowns to caregiving, it's hard to explain it all, actually. Um, what caregivers go, you, go through, we can't even fathom unless we walk in those shoes. And there are many different agents and types of caregiving that's out there. Whoops, there's your film. Caregivers provide care to people of all ages, such as children, aging parents, relatives, spouses or partners, friends, or neighbors. Caregiver stress is abundant. Um, it can be very awarding, rewarding, but very challenging. Stress is common due to emotional and physical strain that the caregiver goes through. Women are especially at risk. There are harmful health effects, health effects, including depression and anxiety. You may even have feelings of anger, rage, guilt, or chronic exhaustion. Caregiver burnout is a state of physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion. It can be accompanied by changes of attitude. You may start out being very positive and caring in your caregiving experience, and it may progress to being feeling very negative or unconcerned, really having little or no concern to the person you're caregiving for. You may have like a flat effect or become kind of numb and have little emotion at all. Um, another characteristic of burnout is um, experiencing fatigue, stress, or um, depression. Why this topic and why now? As I'm sure many of you have heard, the aging population is growing rapidly. There's an increasing life expectancy. We have declining birth rates. The life expectancy increase, such as ages 51.7 was the life expectancy in 1916. And just last year, 2016, the average life expectancy is 78 years huge difference. In the U.S. between the years 2000 and 2050, the population of age 85 years old is projected to increase 350 percent. And of those people, they will most likely need health care or long-term care services. The portion of the population age 65 and older is expected to increase from 12.7 percent in 2000 all the way to 20.3% in 2050. And this last statistic always surprises me. The portion of population of age 85 years old is expected to increase from 1.65% in 2000 to 48 in 2050. Some caregiver stats. 43.5 million people in the U.S have provided unpaid care within the last year. 
43.5 million people. That is an astronomical amount. There's a couple of things I wanted to add into this quickly that are not on the slide, but there are some things that um, ARP has really, really pushed to have our legislatures push with Congress to help our unpaid caregivers. So if you want more further information, you, there is on the last page of resources the ARP website. But there was the, um, the CARE Act that took effect January 1st, which means that everyone as a patient in the hospital will have a designated family caregiver who will really help be involved as far as that patient's discharge to help them provide care at home and do whatever medical tasks need to be provided in hopes that they can go home versus a nursing home. And the other one I just came across um, the other day, actually, because I get the art magazine at home. Um, the ARP really continues to support the RAISE, R-A-I-S-E, Family Caregivers Act, which would require the development of a national strategy to support family caregivers, and the Credit for Caring Act, which would provide a tax credit, credit for eligible working family caregivers. Again, please, re, um, if you want more further information, look into the um, ARP website that I'll provide you at the end of this presentation. But it's nice to know at least there's some things that are trying to happen out there for many of us on paid caregivers. Um, the next statistic, 34.2 million people in the U.S. have provided unpaid care to an adult age 50 plus within the last year. The majority of caregivers are female, 60% female, 40% male, and the average caregiver is 49. And if you think of most 49 years old, the majority are married with kids of their own. So there's a lot of us in that sandwich generation that are providing care to our own families, our own children, spouses, and then we're most likely caring for um, an older loved one, be it a parent or a grandparent. One in 10 caregivers is the age of 75 or older. The majority of caregivers care for relatives. 49% care for a parent or a parent-in-law. One in 10 caregivers care for a spouse. There's another statistic that I didn't get on here in time, but it's, um, there are statistics out there about the death of a caregiver. And one was I referred to or found earlier was 30% of caregivers actually die before those of their, the one they're caring for. Some statistics I found are higher, but if it's not death, it could be illness is high, as well as depression or having an autoimmune disease. The average amount of care for people, for caregivers, is usually four years. But I personally, in my history of my career, have found um, two to three of the caregivers I was supporting did pass away before their loved one. And a lot of it was due to the stress that they endured. The time spent caregiving. The average amount of time a week, hours a week of caregiving is 24 and a half. Nearly one quarter of caregivers spend 41 plus hours a week. That's more than a full-time job. We mentioned earlier, a lot of these caregivers are probably working themselves and have families. Plus, they're doing this many hours of care above and beyond. Those caregiving for a spouse spend an average of 44.6 hours a week. The graph that follows is just kind of showing you the significance of the the hours spent each week of caregiving and the age of the caregiver. And the, the bottom one just still blows me away. 75 years plus, they're spending almost 40 hours a week caregiving for their spouse. Yes, most of them are retired, but again, most of them probably have their own chronic illnesses or, you know, disabilities to some regard, and it's hard for them to take care of themselves, let alone who they're caring for. That kind of gives you a rough, a rough timeline there. The majority of caregiving 
that's needed is the assistance with, with activities of daily living. And that's really kind of the basic cares that people are needing, the bathing, the eating, toileting, dressing, or transferring. Assessing the needs of caregivers is something that's often overlooked. Only one in three caregivers say a healthcare provider has asked them what they need to what they need to care for their loved one. And only 16% of caregivers say a healthcare provider has asked them what they need to take care of themselves. That is often overlooked. Conversations about caring for caregivers needs to start happening. Eight in 10 caregivers say they could benefit from more information on caregiving topics. Eight in 10, that's a very, very high percentage. They need more information on how to help caregiving. Most commonly, caregivers seek information on how to keep loved ones safe at home or managing their own stress. The demands of caregiving are extremely overwhelming. A lot of times we hear quotes of, I feel I'm in over my head. I have very little control. I, of, I often hear the phrases like, um, I've become more trapped in this environment. I feel more isolated. Um, a lot of times these caregivers that are caring for their loved ones feel um, like the world's closing in around them and they're feeling more trapped. They might have been social and had support of other people, and then once they become ill, they're less and less able to go out and do the things they normally do. So those friendships or those social circles, excuse me, um, begin to shrink. And that's where it's really, really frightening for depression to set in, um, some resentment, some other things I'll hit on here. It's, um, it's really concerning. If stress of caregiving is ignored, it can lead to health issues, relationship challenges, emotional strain, and burnout. Signs and symptoms of stress to be very cautious of and aware of. Anxiety, depression, which we've touched on, and irritability. Feeling tired and run down. Difficulty sleeping. Overreacting to minor nuisances. New or worsening health conditions. Maybe you notice you have trouble concentrating, more forgetful, feeling increasingly resentful, questioning why we're doing this, and being angry about it, and why am I the one that has to care give? Why can't somebody else do it? Drinking alcohol, smoking or eating too much, neglecting responsibilities, or cutting back on leisure activities. Signs and symptoms of burnout, less energy, you're catching a cold or flu, flu bug that um, anytime it comes around, you're catching it. Constant exhaustion, even after sleeping. I've heard some people say that they're sleeping great, they're sleeping eight to 10 hours, but they wake up and they're still feeling exhausted. You neglect your own needs because you're too busy or you just don't care anymore. Your life revolves around caregiving but it gives you little satisfaction. You have trouble relaxing even when help is available. It's become such a focus of your whole life. So where can caregivers turn for help? There are an abundant resources. I should have capitalized that because it's just amazing how many things are out there right now, but I think it's um, a lot of things may surprise you, and um, there's just a lot more that keeps coming up all over in little communities and beyond, so it's really, really good to explore your own community, and then, as I said at the end, I'll provide resources where you can connect with more county and state agencies as well. So where can caregivers turn for help? Private pay agencies is always an option. It helps caregivers provide daily care while they're living at home. So we're just listing some here through Minnesota and Wisconsin coverage.
Rogers Lakeview Home Care, Home Instead, Visiting Angels, Bright Star, Comfort Keepers, just to name a few. Um, then there's other options for food. And this part of Help for Caregivers is really, really um, blooming right now. There's a lot more of these different meal or grocery services, delivery services, or even our um, area grocery stores now are really offering a lot more delivery services or, you know, call online and order and you can pick up. So this has been a real real improvement, I think, in our one of our services we can help people. So the meal or grocery delivery, there's Meals on Wheels, and that's through both Minnesota and Wisconsin. Door to door, Coburn's delivers, Kemp's Home Delivery, Festival Foods, Delivery Fix, Five Loaf, and then a Home Delivered Meal Program in Wisconsin. Caregivers can also order groceries online to be picked up. Kowalski's on the go. Minnesota, Cub Foods, Grind's Market in Stillwater, Nolan's Fresh Foods in Lake Elmo, Family Fresh, and then it's in Hudson, New Richmond, and River Falls, and Walmart. And I believe Walmart is fairly new where they'll, you can call and, you know, order your groceries and then they'll pack it all up and you just go and pick it up. Another option for help is personal care attendance from your county. You must be eligible for this service, and it's a financial eligibility that um, social workers from the county would assess. And then there's a couple websites there for more information on that. Where you caregivers can turn for help, another option is um, transportation. Transportation is always something that um, I feel, and it's definitely in Washington County, we need more of it. But um, hopefully we'll see improvements down the road on this. But there here's some transportation companies that are listed. Either it's door through door, so they'll pick you up at your door of your house, put you in their vehicle, and then bring you up to the door of your appointment. These are usually just for medical appointments. Um, and then some of the others will do um, pick you up at your door and then leave you at the door, and not necessarily through the door where you're going. Each one of these, it's really important to call and question exactly what they do because they, they may change their protocol. Um, some, and then there's a fee for depending on how many miles you go. Some are more reasonable than others. Um, but here's a list here um, for your reference. So managing your own stress is very, very important. Um, there are a lot of local agencies to support caregiving journey that you may not be aware of. Um, churches in our community is very prominent. Um, many churches do have parish nurses, so they can do home visits. There's volunteers that can do home visits. I believe there's even some volunteers through churches that may help transport. Um, if your person is able to physically get themselves in and out of the car, they may be able to transport them to um, an appointment or maybe to a hair haircut. They can help, help with chores or just visiting too. Family Means is a nonprofit agency held in Stillwater, and they service Minnesota and Wisconsin. Um, for Wisconsin, their primary focus is mental health counseling. They do both mental health counseling in Minnesota and Wisconsin, but not caregiver support in Wisconsin at this time. Family Means does a lot of caregiver support by having support groups. One is here monthly in Stillwater, and that's actually co-led with um, a physician from Stillwater Medical Clinic. And then there's also a support group in Cottage Grove. They also offer a program called Respite Volunteers that visit once a week, and that would be to give you, the caregiver, a break, and that Respite Volunteer can provide one-on-one -on -one companionship and socialization to who you're caring for at home. And there's a um, like a monthly contribution added, depending asked for, excuse me, depending on your income. There's also a day, pro, day out program at Family Means, which is held every Friday from 10 to 2, and that's where you can bring your loved one um, for a day of socialization and activities, exercise and entertainment, and to give you a break. So 
and that's usually from 10 to 2 on Fridays. And then Family Means also offers a class, usually a couple times a year, called Powerful Tools for Caregivers, and that's a six-week six seri six week series class that um, we have a caregiver come to. And there's only about six to ten people in the class, and it really develops into your own support group. And you collaborate together, and you talk about your caregiving experience, and the facilitators really help you develop kind of a toolbox of what to use to best care for yourself while you're caring for somebody else. It's a phenomenal class. Another um, local agency is Community Thread, and they're, they have senior centers in Stillwater and Bayport. So the senior center is a place to go where your loved one can go and um, engage in some daytime activities and socialization. They also provide transportation. Again, it would just be to some local appointments, medical appointments, and then some chore services. And then in Wisconsin, St. Croix County, there's the Family Caregiver Support Program, which helps with information and assistance, training, and their support groups. Take a break. Offering care for your loved one, a day of activity while you rejuvenate or take care of yourself. So like I mentioned with Family Means and the Day Out program on Fridays, there are other agencies that offer a full day of respite, and it's a day program, and they, a lot of these agencies that are listed below have the service every day. So you could bring your loved one every day or do you know, two to three days a week, depending on what you're finding the need for. So there's an adult day center at St. Ambrose in Woodbury. Circle of Friends is here in Stillwater, and it's part of Botwell's Landing. Day Out I had mentioned already at Family Means. Adult Day Center and Salvation Army in Maplewood. There's an adult day club in Chisago County. And then the Common Sense Services in South St. Paul. Offering care for your loved one. Um, Again, a day to take for yourself, some options in Wisconsin. Day Away, which is in Hudson and New Richmond. Day Friends, which is in Balsam Lake. And then there is the Respite Care Association of Wisconsin. A lot of these Wisconsin resources can be found through the um, Aging Dis Disability Resource Center, which will be um, highlighted as one of your resources at the back of this. Another option is the gathering at Botwell's, and that's um, a smaller part of Botwell's facility, and it just it offers care and comfort while you take a vacation, a long weekend, or go away for just a few days. It's a very home-like atmosphere with, with four comfort suites. It's like four independent little apartment rooms, private room with their own bathroom, very home-like, meals are included, and it's a private pay. Surviving the caregiver journey. It is so important that people reach out and ask for help. I cannot stress that enough. And the sooner you ask for help, the better it will be in the long run. Sometimes we encourage people through my career and the different settings I've had with caregivers to start with a little bit. Sometimes I think it's really overwhelming for that caregiver or it's a privacy issue, it's a comfort issue, I don't want to ask for help. Maybe somebody else needs it more than I do. Start with a little bit at a time. Don't wait. The sooner you ask, the more support you'll get, and you will feel less alone. I also stress for you to do your homework. Research your loved one's illness or injury. The more you know about their condition, the better you'll be able to care for them. Look for and utilize the resources Surviving the caregiver journey. Get organized. Make lists and calendars to track appointments, schedules of those who support you in your caregiving. That is very, very helpful to do that. It's important also to take care of your own health. See your doctor regularly for checkups. Get enough sleep and exercise when you can. Stay in touch with family and friends, even if it's a phone call. I highly suggest you're able to Find someone to sit with who you're caring for so you can have lunch. 
to go out for a walk with somebody, or even go to church, you know that your friend will be there. Even if it's an hour, join a support group for caregivers. I've listed some throughout this presentation. I can't tell you how many times after I've um, encouraged someone to come to a support group, after their first one, they always say, oh my gosh, it's so good to know I'm not alone. Do things you enjoy with others. Simple tips to prevent caregiver stress and burnout. Of course, number one is exercise. Again, it can just be walking around the block outside for 10, 15 minutes. Socialize, very important to keep your social group. Journaling is a good way to do it, some downtime. Another thing I didn't put on here, which I thought of this morning reviewing this, is I've heard more and more people that, you know, when they do become more isolated and have to stay at home, they've designated a portion of their house that's their salvation place. Their sanctuary. So they have this place in their house. Well, every morning they'll go and sit there and they'll listen to their music that calms them. Or they'll go sit there and journal. Or they will go and just do some meditation before their loved one gets up. Any place in their house, or if it's summer, it's out on their deck. Obviously, journaling doesn't work much better if it's quiet. Eat healthy foods. Laugh. Laughter is very, very important. And sometimes it's just seeing the laughter in the, in the situation you're in. Get some fresh air. Helps immensely, and we're getting closer to the next time of year. Be kind to yourself. There's been no strict class or college degree to go and get a caregiving degree and know exactly what you're doing. And sometimes you're in this situation and it wasn't really planned or you didn't really want to be in the first place. So be gentle with yourself and know you're doing the best that you can. Meditate. Try and get enough sleep. Pick your battles. Um, some things are left alone. and Some things are better off just to um, not argue about. Some of the things we just are better left just to leave them alone. Schedule time to yourself. And the next one is called create a balance sheet. If you take a piece of paper and you draw a line down the middle, the left-hand side is who you're caring for. Let's say it's John. And the right-hand side is you. So every time you do a task for John, you write it down on the left-hand side. Like, I helped him get dressed today. I gave him a bath. I made his lunch. On the right-hand side, you write down you. And you write down something that you do for yourself. So maybe when you made lunch for Bob, you made a sandwich. You actually took the time to make one for yourself. And you sat down and you ate it. So that's one thing you can put down that you did for yourself. And the goal of this create a balance sheet is that hopefully over time, you'll have more balance of things that you do for your loved one and that you're doing for yourself and that you, you feel much better. It's not easy to do. It's something to start working on and just keep working on. In closing, being a caregiver is one of the most challenging jobs one we may make the choice or we just find ourselves in a role. Whatever the reason may be, we can make the journey in a positive way. Become wiser, more knowledgeable, and insightful by reaching out for help and support. No one needs to do this alone. And then there's my page of resources. Thank you, Lisa, for uh, doing this presentation. It was very helpful. And we have a few minutes. If anyone has questions you'd like to ask Lisa, there's a Q&A tab at the top of the screen. Uh, just click on that and you type in questions for her. She can answer anything you'd like. Um, I, we will send out an email uh, probably tomorrow with the recording of this webinar. And the, I'll send a link to the video again in case you didn't get a chance to watch it beforehand. So, uh, and we'll include these resources as well. So you've got all this information. Um, just wait a few minutes if you have some questions. And I wanted to show you, let's see, we have 
I included a slide on the last page. This is the April uh, webinar called uh, New Mom Stress or Postpartum Depression. This will be helpful for, for new moms or moms-to-be to listen to. I'll turn it back to the resources page if you want to look at that. We'll give, and we'll just hang on for another minute. If anyone has questions, they can type them in. And we really appreciate you joining us today. As I said before, I will send an email with the recording. So if you came on late, we'll have you'll be able to see the see and hear the whole uh, presentation from today. Well, I don't think we're going to have any questions. So I would like to again thank you for joining us, and we'll sign off now. Thank you. <laughs>